So that means, what's this dimension? And then where is the 4.8 over 17.2 going to be? To the left. So it's got to be out 17 feet, 17.2 feet, and up, and up for 4.9. So it's going to be around here. 4.8. 4.8. Oh, there <laughs> Does everybody agree where I put that point? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and then the one to the right is six point eight, so it's a bit, a little bit higher, right? They usually, they usually do more than that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. We're, just, we're going simple to harder. Okay. Not simple. Yeah. Um, you went for to harder. Okay. And we're going out. Twenty. 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 I did is I drew the road bed and it said that it was 20 feet wide. So I drew my center line and I knew it was 10 feet to the left, 10 feet to the right. I chose the middle point, which is C5 point. I knew it was cut. So the existing ground surface had to be above it. The middle point, since it has nothing under here, <coughs> this is no denominator, what is it implying that the denominator is? Zero. Zero, which means it's on the center line. There's no x value. So it's 5.9 up. And then the point to the left is 4.8 up, but 17.2 over. And the point on the right is 20.2 over from, this is the origin point, and 6.8 up. So now how would we do the double area method? Let's start with this point. And we can put negatives in later on. So we have 4.8 over. 17.2, we have 5.9 over 0, we have 6.8 .8 over 20.2, and then what do we need to do? So, so far I put in these points. So let's call, let's call it point 1, 2, and 3. So this is point 1, this is point 1, this is point 2, this is point three. Do I need more points? Where? I need this point, four, and I need this point, five. Because this is every place that there's a change in the slope. So here's point one, point two, point three, point four. What is the coordinate? I'm going to go back here because you guys never got to when I went around the room. So Seth, what's what, what point the four? Oh, that would be... Zero over ten. Yeah, no, I am. Pointed at me. Right answer. We're all getting a bit. Uh, <laughs> I wanted Ivan. Okay. So, uh, Ivan, what's five? Um, zero over ten. Also. Okay. And then Brian, am I done here? No, I, I, I do. Um, I'll finish off with 4.8 over 17. Right, I have to come back and do point one, 4.8 .8 over 17.2. Nathan, am I done? No. What? Okay, so what needs a negative? First, do any of the y's need a negative? No. No, no because they're all above the road, so they're all going to be positive. So do any x's need a negative? Yes. Which, one, which points? One and five, yeah. One, one and five. Five and one. Yep. 
I don't think we need to do the math. Mm -hmm. You already know how to do that. Are we good? Mm -hmm. Now, I picked, everybody, this is really important. I picked the core. What I did is, what I, made, I made this problem up. I picked the 20 foot road bed. I picked the side slopes. And I figured out if I wanted a height of 4.8, how far did I have to go over? I did the math to figure out so that this side slope hit this exactly. I picked those points. So that it's perfect. Okay? But that's not always the case, right? Because if you have a road bed, a real world problem would be, okay, I have a road bed. First of all, it's a pretty narrow road, but we'll keep it narrow. Two lane road. Oh, is that called a two lane road? Or one lane or one lane road? How do you define a road? Highway one here is what? Two, lane. two lane or four lane? Two. Four lane. Four. Four. Four lane, two, lane, two in this way, two in that way. When you name a road, it's named by the total number of lanes. So this is a two lane road, right? Ten feet wide, we're not gonna fit two. It's probably one one car and a shoulder. It's like highway nine. So normally I would go out, I would send my survey team out there and they would pick any kind wherever there's a change in slope. So they would survey this point, this point, this point. This point, this point, this point, this point, this point, this point. And then once we get information from the, the, uh, the geotechnical engineer, we learn that the slope needs to be this. So what points am I going to use? So let's call these points. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I know you already know these. We need those. So what points am I going to use for my area? Well, we need two more. Two, three, seven, and eight, <coughs> and eleven, and whatever that one is. Definitely yeah. ten and eleven. Well, don't you have five? These? So we're going to need three. We're going to need uh, four. We're going to need five. We're going to need six. We're going to need seven. 10 and 11, do I need anything else? I need. Yes, I need these points. Because I'm trying to figure out what this area is. If I'm trying to figure out what this area is, I need to know what that coordinate is. So don't you have to use 8 and 2 to do that? Or no? No, because if you put 8 and 2 in there, well, then I you're actually calculating that. the area to 8. So you know, I was trying to find like, the, the, the so okay. Yeah. No, so this is, would be another number. Let's call it A and B. But we have to find out where point A and B is. Right? So we know the slope of this line, right? And we know what the slope of this line is. We could find the intersection of two lines. That's why I was saying you have to use two. Right? You need to use slope, this information okay. yeah. to find that location yeah. of that point. Yeah. But once you find the coordinate of that point, you're only using that point in calculating your area. Yeah, you're just using the extension of that line. Right, because if I keep point two in my area, it's going to be greater. And if I use point three, it's going to be smaller. So how do you figure it out? So one, if you draw it in AutoCAD, and you draw, you, you draw all these points on the existing ground surface on AutoCAD, you draw these with the coordinates, and then you draw lines from that slope, you could ask AutoCAD what that point is. You say, what is the intersection of these two lines? And it'll give you what the coordinate is. But if you have to do it with math, you have to look at the slope of the two lines. So what you need is you need an equation of two lines. So the equation of this line, what's an equation of a line? Y is equal to mx plus b. And here, this one needs to have y is equal to mx plus b. But if we don't want to do it by math, what was the first step we had to do? What did it say? You do it by measuring it with your ruler. I mean, it's supposed to say draw it to scale. Yeah. 
Where is that? It's measured. I don't see it. Draw it to scale. If you draw all this to scale, you're going to be able to look on your graph paper and figure out what that point is. Okay? And then you need those points. So how many points total do you need to do the double area method? You just need a whole chart. That's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I see nine. So we can do this on AutoCAD. And we can do it on AutoCAD. Okay. But do the calculation with the double area method, and then you check yourself with AutoCAD. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So yeah. you can draw, with, draw with AutoCAD or draw it by hand. So let's look at another one. Let's look at the second one. Number two, again, I picked points that were exactly on the slope. You, I think, does everybody feel comfortable with number one? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not gonna, we're not going to do number two then. Let's do something different. Can you comment as to what the giant golden not required means? The giant what? Not required. Oh, you don't have to do that for the homework. Oh. You don't have to do three and four. Okay. Is that okay. something we're it's going kind to do? I, when I first taught the class, I had that, and I realized it was really outside. It was too good. It was outside the scope of what you should yeah. be doing in this class. Yeah. So I just said you don't have to do it. But I give you the solutions for that. Is it because of the fill on here? It's part cut and part fill. It just complicates it. And you, you could do it, but if it's, you know, more for, it's for an advanced class. So this, this is also part of homework in addition to the other sheet. Well, if you look at the syllabus, you have two homework okay. assignments. Okay. Homework eight and this one. Okay, so now let's look at five and six. So let's look at five first. Good. So let's take a look. First of all, do you know quickly by looking at these fractions whether they're cut or fill? No. No, why not? There's no C or F. So we have to read it. It says the base of the road is 20 feet wide, 10 and 10, and it has an elevation of 120. So what are these y values here? What do they represent? <coughs> Their elevations. Right? So let's convert number five. Let's convert number five to the accepted coordinates for cut and fill. So first, is it a cut or a fill? It looks like a... Cut. cut. It's a cut because the base is 120 feet in elevation and the numbers you're getting are higher. So it's got to be a cut. So what would you use for the, the number? Let's start from the middle. So the middle one is 125 over 0. So how would I write that one? We know what the denominator would be 0. I'm going to put a C for cut. Number 5? Yeah. 20? Or no, when, or which, when are we starting? The middle, the middle one. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I was looking at the end. So it should be C5. Does everybody see that? Because it's telling you the numerator represents the y value. It's not the amount you have to cut or fill because there's no C or F there. We have no idea what the hell that number is until we read it and we say, oh, the elevation of the base is 120. This must be an elevation, and it must be the elevation of that point that the surveyor shot. So that means it's converted to a C5 over 0. Cody with a K. How about the 126 over 5, which is to the left? What would that be? Um. I'm kind of, uh, I'm still kind of just seeing it. Okay. E6. Allison? Yeah, C6 over 5. And how about the other, the one all the way to the left? C5 over 20. And the ones to the right? C4 over 10. And C5 five over 20. So once you have this, are you comfortable now? With, uh, you draw you draw the base of 20, 10, 10, 
you draw the one in the middle five feet up the middle, right? So you go, you're going to do the same thing here. You're going to go over 10, go over 10. The center one is five. Then you're going to go over five and go up six. And then you're going to go over 20 and go up five. You're going to go over 10 and go up four. And then go over another 10 and go up five. So we, Patrick. we know it's cut because the elevation of the points in the serrator shot is above the layer of the road. That's the right. The base of the road. Right. Okay. Yeah. And that's where we subtracted all of these numbers. That's right. From. One point. Yeah, they were less oh, did you see that? Now? Yeah, no, I see it now. Sorry. So it says it's it tells you that the base has an elevation of 120, so you mm -hmm. know it's here. Mm -hmm. And you don't know what these numerators are, but you do know there will have to be y's. Mm -hmm. Well, the fact that they're so close to 120, you know that they're elevations. Yeah. So it's five. The middle one was five feet above the base. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Okay, so Ivan's asking, do you have to, um, uh, is it, is number five like this board on the right where I, I drew the point 